And we know the drill weekly here. We got Summers Point, Egg Harbor Township, and those of us that are online. So let's go ahead and let's put our hands together and let's welcome those that are online. And also baptism weekend at all of our locations. So those that have been baptized, come on, let's celebrate. What a great day for those getting baptized. And we're going to jump right into a message series. The title of it is Help. I think I'm losing it. How many of us have been there before? Correct? Like, I think I'm losing it. Like, it's not good. And listen, it can be a variety of reasons why we think we are losing it. It's been the pandemic. It's been losing a job. It's been my spouse has lost their mind. My kids might die today if I don't get my act together. The boss is literally the devil themselves. Junk in the trunk from many, many years ago, and the list goes on and on. So listen, I don't know about you, but I want you to share today's message. Uh, It is a game changer for people's lives, and what I love about sharing this message online with Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, and the list goes on and on, is sharing this message is going to change someone's life, and they will be alive because we chose to really share what God is doing in our hearts and lives. As we uh, really uh, become more aware of mental health, and as May is Mental Health Awareness Month, I've understood my own personal journey of mental challenges uh, and really want to really uh, maybe possibly change the word for today's discussion from mental, because (laughs) the moment we say mental, it's like, that's not me. Well, let's change the word then to include the word soul, which is mind, will, and emotions. And as we talk about soul awareness or mental awareness, every one of us have been impacted in some way. In fact, what is mental health? Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. And some of us today might go, man, I'm, I'm fine emotionally, Psychologically, I'm a little bit of a hot mess. You might say socially I'm doing pretty well, but emotionally I'm on the downswing. And and really mental or social or uh, soul health affects how we think, feel, act. It also determines how we handle stress, how we uh, relate to others, and, and how we make choices. Mental health uh, is an experience of the way we're thinking, our, our mood, and, and our behavior within our life. And over the course of our life, listen to this, over the course of our lives, if we contribute to this mental health and the problems, these things that begin to kind of unravel in our life, that they could be uh, biological factors, such as genes or chemistry. Uh, One of my family members has clinical depression because of levels that are incorrect within her brain. And uh, that's brain chemistry that's leading to depression and has been on medication as long as I've been alive. Uh, The second thing, talking about soul or mental health, is uh, life experiences such as trauma and abuse. I would say this is the category that Brendan falls into, growing up in three civil wars. I, I was born in a civil war. I was born in the country of Rhodesia, Africa. It's not even around anymore. I have a birth certificate of a country that doesn't exist. I probably beat most Americans in the room. The country now is called Zimbabwe, but I was born in Rhodesia. I was born in a war where my mom had to go a week early to the capital city because we lived on a farm and she couldn't have birth to me on the farm. I've lived in South Africa with uh, the system of apartheid and segregation. Growing up in elementary school, being taught how to be a racist. That's trauma right there. Uh, Growing up in the country of Mozambique. So again, trauma in that area is, is where I identify with that. And then maybe for some of us today, family history of mental health problems. You would go, They had issues, and there is a propensity, if I don't get it together, that there could be issues within my life. But today, we can be encouraged 
We can be encouraged that the Word of God has many biblical personalities that dealt with mental or soul challenges within their life, and we'll look at them uh, today. I I think what I want to also say is a disclaimer. Hi, my name's Brandon. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a licensed counselor. I'm not even a therapist. I'm a pastor, and I've done life as a Christ follower for over 27 years. I've done junk in my life for the 42 years that I've been alive, and I've done full-time ministry for over now 22 years of my life. And so what I present to you today is not a doctoral understanding. It's not a licensed understanding. It is simply the Word of God and practical understanding. On the church app that you have where you can follow along with your notes, at the bottom of the church app notes is a bunch of links to uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, and local people that we refer to, also a number of messages that we've shared in the past that have doctors of psychology. In fact, next week I'll have a doctor on with me as we unpack help. I think I'm losing it. But, but I, w- I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna bust a myth. Anyone ever show, watch the show Mythbusters? Okay, I, I wanna bust a myth right now because I think many of us are living under the lie of a myth that we believe, and the myth is called straight line growth, straight line growth, okay? So we think that we are, when we, beca- when we get saved, straight line. Even better, many of us will identify with this. When you get married, it's gonna be amazing, baby. All the way up, it ain't never, I mean, I literally counseled a couple one time. We never fight. I was like, baby, this is gonna be good. That first year is gonna be glorious, you know? Uh, you, you start a new job. How many of us are like, it's the best job I've ever had? How many of us, you, you came to Fusion for the first time, you're like, this is amazing. It can never be bad. And then all of a sudden, something happens, you know? Uh, you're, you're, you're becoming a Christ follower. Okay, so can I just say this is a myth? This is a lie, okay? Tell your neighbor, it's a myth and a lie. Come on, tell them right now. It's a myth and a lie. This is life right here. Squiggly line. Life is up and down, up and down, up and down, correct? How many of us go, yeah, that's my life right there? How many of you like, that's my marriage, that's my finances, that's my kids, that's me, that's my mind, that's my spirituality, that's my relationship with Fusion Church. I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you, okay? Because in the beginning, there's straight line. And then something happens. COVID happens. We get fired. We get uh, 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 yeah, the straight line growth right now. The real estate market in South Jersey, it's crazy. You know, just up, 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 up. But at some point, baby, the real estate market is going to go into a free fall. In the, it's, uh, and, and this is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the free falls will happen. They're going to happen. Something's going to trigger you. Some trauma is going to go up. Um, I've shared the story. You know, when COVID first happened, I got two texts from uh, secret service agents around the country that said, go get all the food you can. I text my wife. Remember what I said? Go get the powdered milk. Why? That was a free fall of trauma from growing up in a civil war of Mozambique. And we all have these different free falls within our life. Now, here, here it is. Kind of just press in. The difference is, is when I can get myself out of the free fall. Now, we would propose it's not you, yourself, that can get you out of the free fall. It's a relationship with Jesus. It's tapping into the Holy Spirit and all those different types of things. I think this is the difference right here, is everyone, including me, will have this great, 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 Free fall moment, correct? Like, how many of us have been on the roller coaster before? You click in and it's like, clip, click, 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 click. And you're like, this is good. This is gonna be amazing. You get to the top, you're like seeing everything. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, and you go down. Um, a trauma for me was my car accident last, last year. I'm going to the orthodontist with my son, and bam, I'm in car accident right there. And now, every time I go through a car, uh, an intersection, I'm like, where the crazies at? Where the crazies at? Where the crazies at? So uh, I want to I wanna bust that myth, and we're going to come back to that uh, a few times and look at this. But in the Bible, there, there are many, many, many different personalities and, uh, that we can look at, 
And again, uh, over the next period of time, we, we can't even unpack this whole mental uh, soul health. It's, it's really a journey that all of us need to be on personally and individually. But in Judges 16, there's a Bible personality. His name's Samson. Samson was a leader of Israel. He was a judge of Israel. But let's be honest. If you know the story, Samson messes up. Okay, Samson gets involved in himself involved with a girl that uh, is not a, a, a God follower. She's pretty crazy, and uh, and he gets himself in this free fall over here. So Judges 16, verse 27. This is when he's been caught. His eyes have been gouged, gouged out, and he's on show for the Philistines. And it says, now the temple was crowded with men and women, and all rulers of the Philistines were there. And on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me. Have you ever prayed that in a downward spiral? Please, God, strengthen me. Please, God, strengthen me once more and let me with one blow get revenge. Everybody say that word revenge. Revenge. This pumped out at me. And uh, I was like, this is what God wants to speak about. So let me get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand and his left hand. And Samson said, let me die with these Philistines. Then he pushed with all of his might and down came the temple. And on the rulers and the people, thus he killed many more when he died than when he lived. And verse 31 says, he led Israel 20 years. So he had been a a pastor, let's call it that, correct, Uh, for 20 years. And in the midst of the 20 years, he had high highs and low lows. He had got himself involved in, um, the, the Bible says in the New Testament, an unequally yoked relationship with someone that didn't believe the way he should, okay? So again, maybe some of us are in a free fall uh, because we're involved in something we shouldn't be involved in. And what stood out to me in this, and as we unpack this in the few minutes that we have together today, is that Samson had revenge in his heart. He was praying, God, (laughs) let me do this and kill as many people as possible. And yet even last week we studied uh, where the greatest commandment is, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, everything that you have. That's not the heart that Samson has. Samson's like, I've got no eyes and I wanna kill as many people as possible. And so here's number one, correct? Number one is this, that everyone has some form of mental health challenge. And, and, And let's, Let's be all right to go, yes. Like, don't look at me weird. Like some of you are like, I don't. I'm like, yeah, you do. You didn't take your meds this morning. That's why you're looking at me the way you're looking at me, correct? Like everyone, everyone. Like, hi, my name's Brendan. I'm a hot mess sometimes. Hi, my name's Brendan. I get triggered by my kids sometimes. Hi, my name's Brendan. My Instagram picture of me and my wife at Easter looks pretty ravishing and incredible. But guess what? Once in a while, we're pretty much of a hot mess together. Hi, my name's Brendan. I don't always like all of you in the church, but I really love you and I really pray that we are in eternity together. We've all got the challenges within our life. And the worst thing today is to have pride and go, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm totally fine, okay? That is not the best thing. Everyone has some form of mental or soul health challenge. Here here it is. A, it's not just you. It's not just you. I think there's a lot of us that think I'm the only one going through this. I'm the only one going through something that we've gone through during COVID. You're not the only one. In fact, that's why I love reading the Word of God. That's why I love soaping Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. You can log on at 6 a.m. in the morning and do a Zoom with like 50 to 60 people. You can do it daily by yourself. But every time I soap, I'm like, they are just as messed up as I am. Praise God for that right there. You know, like, woo! I mean, the other day I read a scripture that the disciples forgot the bread. Have you ever forgotten something like your car keys? 
Have you ever forgotten like to pick up the grocery on the way home when your spouse asks you to? Have you ever forgot a kid somewhere, you know? And I read that scripture about the disciples forgetting bread. I was like, man, they forgot it too. They're just as bad as I am in the context of that. So, so when I read about biblical personalities having mental health struggles, I also see that Jesus had anguish and struggle. In fact, Jesus' sweat was like drops of blood. And the physician Luke that wrote the book of Luke in Luke 22, verse 24 says, And being in anguish, being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. This is Jesus. And his sweat was like drops of blood, like drops of blood falling to the ground. The dictionary definition of the word anguish, some of us can see this, is severe mental or physical pain or suffering. How many of us have been there before? How many of us have been there with severe, severe mental or physical or emotional suffering? How many of us have been there with a loss of a loved one? How many of us have been there currently with someone that is sick How many of us have been there with something that torments us? I've had my fair share of anxiety attacks. For many, many years, I suffered with high, undiagnosed blood pressure. I could have no idea why I got myself into the position and felt the way I felt. And every time I went to the doctor, they said, you got a high blood pressure. And I was like, yeah, I ran in, I ran in. Liar, Brandon, you are. (laughs) I'm just stressed, doc. Just stress. This was Long Island, Phoenix, and all of a sudden I get to Jersey. Okay, I'm like, okay, this is this something I got to figure out what's going on. And I, and I take medicine for the genetic, thanks mom and grandpa, the high blood pressure that I have within my life. But Jesus had severe mental anguish. In fact, a commentator says we can conclude quite justifiably that the terminology used by the gospel writer to refer to this severe mental distress that Jesus was experiencing was intended to be taken literally, i.e. that the sweat of Jesus became bloody. A thorough search of the medical literature demonstrates that such a condition, while admittedly rare, does occur in humans. Jesus was travailing with such intensity in what he was about to experience, dying on the cross for you and I and bearing our sin, our trauma, and the memories of things that have been done to us, literally, that the blood vessels in his forehead were protruding and coming so close to the surface that they were mixing with blood and water and sweat. And so I wanna encourage each of us today that don't be embarrassed, okay? So everyone's going to struggle with mental health challenges, but see is this, don't be embarrassed. I I think, don't be, hi, my name is Brandon. I'm a hot mess. Anyone else with me? Any other hot messes? Someone's point, how are you doing today? Okay, yeah, someone's point is like, we're all a hot mess down over here, correct? And those of us online, you can just put up your hand online. Emoticon, hand up by yourself, okay? Because, again, we're going to go up, we're going to go down, we're going to go up, so, so there's no need to be embarrassed. That's why at the end of every service at this church, at every location, there is a prayer team. The prayer team is not because they like to stand up front. The prayer team is because they have gone through junk and want to pray for you to be delivered from your junk. They want to journey with you, okay? So there's never, oh, I don't wanna go up front. Yo, get up front, you're a disaster. I mean, sometimes I wanna go, you're a hot mess, you're a hot mess, you're a hot mess, you're a hot mess, you're a hot mess. And it's not because I have the gift of prophecy right now. I just know you're a hot mess. And some of us are like walking out like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm totally fine. I mean, what a great day. I'm just so excellent. I'm like, no, you're a walking disaster. Get to the front, you know, like drag you to the front type of a thing. Why? Because then someone can pray with you and they can stand in the gap for you and they can war with you and they can go to bat for you and they can ask the Holy Spirit to intervene. We should never leave church the same. We should have an encounter with the God of the Most High 
that intimately through the power of the Holy Spirit comes because we don't have to be embarrassed. Some people said, I don't like the lights low. I'm like, I love the lights low because when I am having the ugly cry, no one needs to see me. And sometimes there is an ugly cry that happens, okay? And you make up hot mess, it's running down, and you're like, I'm so glad they keep the lights low in this place, you know? Versus like, we're all gonna shine big old bright lights against you, like, oh, they're a disaster. And come on, let's be honest. How bad is it to go to places where everyone thinks they're, they're good? And many times we're looking for the perfect church. And I just wanna say, please, don't go to the perfect church. Because when you go to the perfect church, guess what happens? It ain't perfect anymore because you're not perfect. Every church has its disasters. Every church has its mess ups. Why? Because we're all human at the end of the day. So number one, everyone, everyone, everyone struggles with a mental or social challenge within their lives. Number two is this, don't go at it alone. Think about it. Don't go at it alone. Let's go back to that squiggly graph, the free fall one over there. What happens is, and again, sometimes my kids roll their eyes at me because I'm telling stories of like long ago, but I've been doing this long enough. I know you. I know what's gonna happen. I know when you start disconnecting from church, it's not like because the Holy Spirit is filling you and you're all empowered and you're amazing. Like when you don't show up to church, I know there's an issue within your life. And not because you're meeting the Holy Spirit under your comforter type of a thing. You're not showing up because you're in the free fall, baby. And we got to get you out of the free fall. And the free fall is many things to many different types of people. I just want to beg you today because we can unpack and unpack. But simply this, this is the biggest point of today's message. Don't go at it alone because in the free fall you need people come on tell your neighbor don't go at it alone look at them with intensity look at them with passion and say don't go at it but you know what we like to do just leave me alone I just need to work through it by myself no you don't how did it work out the last time how did it work out the time before how's your pain doing right now no you're in a hot mess place and so I love it when people come up to me and they go, Pastor, I didn't just sign up for one group. I signed up for a second and a third and a fourth. And I'm like, yeah, that's the right thing to do. Get yourself in a group. Get yourself in a team. Don't go it alone. Have you heard the old African proverb that it takes a village to raise a child? What well, takes a village to disciple you, Okay. And there needs to be all these different people to be able to come alongside of us because these free falls will happen. Your spouse will act like a fool. Your boss will act like the devil. The president, the cabinet, the senate, the mayors, the governors, healthcare, finances. Because right now you might be here, baby, going, this economy is amazing. I invested in Bitcoin, baby. We're taking off. Guess what's going to happen? It coming down, okay? Someone the other day was like, they offered me $35,000 for my house and I haven't even put it on the market. I'm like, you're either gonna sell and be homeless at that point because there's no other houses in South Jersey, but at some point, it's going to come down because what goes up needs to come down. And the myth, the lie of the devil in your life is, oh, my marriage just has to be good, 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 good. My kids got to be good, 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 good. That was amazing. Thank you so much, guys. That was amazing right there. Okay? It's a good, 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 good. But guess what? It's going to be high and it's going to be low. And it's going to be high and it's going to be low. It is a lie of the enemy for straight line growth in everything. Guess what? You're going to have these days of Fusion Church right here. You're going to be angry with me because I said something that I really never said because you just believed something that the enemy was trying to lie to you. Someone's not going to follow up with you. Someone's not going to connect you in the right way. Someone's going to steal your lanyard. Someone's going to cut you off in the parking lot. You're going to see some demonic driver on the road with a Fusion Church bumper sticker. Okay? It's going to happen. Well, I don't go to church anymore because I saw a crazy person with a Fusion Church bumper sticker. I'm like, you drive just as crazy as they do, okay? At the end of the day, that's the reality. So don't do it alone. But in the Bible, that's why I love this thing. I am in love with. Because crazies are all over this. 
1 Kings 19, let's look at that. Elijah, one of the greatest prophets ever. Now Ahab told crazy Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all of these bad prophets with the sword. So Jezebel got on TikTok, social media, Instagram, and Facebook, Messenger, and sent a message to Elijah and said, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life a living hell like one of them. Elijah, verse three, I want you to get this. Elijah was afraid and ran disconnected for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he dropped out of his connect group, left his servant, there's what it says, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Sounds similar to Samson. I have had enough, Lord. Have you ever prayed that prayer? I'm done. I'm done. I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. Let's be very real. I will propose to you that I think suicides, shootings are going to increase because we're not appropriately dealing with this. Please hear my heart today, church. I can exegete this scripture all day long. I can unpack the Hebrew. I can go to the original Aramaic. But if you've got an addiction to pornography, that doesn't help you. If your marriage is a hot mess, that Aramaic in that moment and the crushed sense of Gilead in the temple doesn't help you. What we need at the end of the day is the Holy Spirit to light this on fire to come set us free. I can keep on teaching all day long about the Word of God, but that doesn't set us free. What we need is the Spirit of God to come. What we need is the Spirit of God to come and reveal us. So Elijah, he makes mistakes. Because he lets a person fill him with fear. Don't ever let a person fill you with fear. Don't ever let the lie of the enemy fill you with fear. The second thing is he disconnects from community. I just need some time. No, you don't need some time. You gotta get in the word. You gotta get in the presence of God. You gotta get in a connect group. But I don't have chemistry with all of the connect groups. Well, let me help you get into another connect group. You need to join a team. You need to show up. We need to get connected because Elijah and Samson disconnected. Here's C. We don't even have time to get into this one. C is this. He stops eating and drinking incorrect nutrition. Sometimes people are a disaster. I'm like, how much water are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking Wawa. That's what I'm drinking. And energy drinks. I'm like, okay, that, but, but drink a gallon of water and come back. And all of a sudden they come back and they've totally changed. Yeah, Elijah prays to die. He has loss of hope. We are living in a hopeless generation. The church needs to be a lighthouse. You and I need to be a lighthouse to this generation. We need to be a place of hope. We need to be a revival center that when people come in, they feel that God is in this place, that they cannot leave unchanged. Even though our lives might not ultimately in that moment change, we're gonna go and say, God, I'm gonna take steps towards you. And so listen, feelings, feelings are very real, but do not allow them to dictate your life. You know, there's a lady in our church, her name's Kristen Skull. Men, it's Kristen Skull. I'm obsessed with her because she is such a pioneer. She is so strengthened by God, and she has busted the myth of the straight line growth. And we've uh, videoed her a number of years ago, and we brought this mashup back of where she was then and how she's doing now. Let's watch this. As many of you know that have been at Fusion for a while know that I've struggled with anxiety and depression and stuff for, for years. I find that it's, it's really important when you're in those struggling times that you stay connected and have those 
people in your life that hold you accountable. The dream teams are the perfect example. Um, getting connected with, you know, the worship team, the production team, kids, something. It's important to have those people that will hold you accountable because if you're not inviting them in to help you, you're not you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get any better. I have a certain certain people who are my, you know, core support team that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they're going to call me out and that's what I need. I need somebody to call me out and say, "Hey, listen, Kristen. You know, I've noticed lately that, you know, maybe you're you're really down the dumps or you haven't been engaging with everyone lately." You need people that will make you engage because that's what keeps you alive. As I was driving through Summers Point all the time, I kept seeing the sign for fusion. I had had suffered from a lot of depression and anxiety. And over time, with coming to church and getting back involved, I noticed that I was starting to realize that I still needed to keep giving more over to God and not allowing my anxiety to run my life as I had been doing for years. As time has gone on, I found that I've gotten more involved and connected with a lot of more people. And over the past couple of months, I've gone off of at least four or five medications and have been able to feel more connected by being able to spend a few hours away from having my service dog with me. Church has become a safe place for me. So I don't feel the need to have all the extra anxiety of being around people because I know that there are people here that love me and that I love. and. They look out for me and they know if I'm having a bad day, they'll come up and they can just, just give me a hug and let me know that everything's fine. After three years, like it's so crazy. I remember how nervous you were in that when you sat down mm. in, the, in the cave yeah. and you were like, Kristen, when you did this video, you were like, uh, what? <laughs> and like you didn't seem nervous on camera, but you were nervous. I was. I guess just knowing that, you know, you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs and it's okay to to feel like you've slipped back a little it's like even with um the service dog like yeah i took a break from him but i'm going through a season right now in my life where you know why it's that or go back on more meds and i don't want to do that you know just keeping involved has given me the strength i think to deal with the mental illness because i know there are people there with me that are going to help me through my struggles and you know keep me going and not let me slide back too far. Yeah. Wow. wow, 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 wow. What I love about that is really point number three. Thank you, Kristen. Work the junk. Like number three is like work the junk. Like there's junk in every single one of our lives. And what we've got to do is be able to work that junk. You know, if we go back to that swiggly line, what I love about Kristen is that in the highs, she was still connected. And in the lows, she got even more connected. And then there was a high and then, then there's a low, but she's going, you know what? I've got a service dog. I really don't want to go back on the meds. I, I got a, she's on our production team and they're holding me accountable. What she's doing is working the junk. Come on, t tell your neighbor, work the junk. Come on, work, work the junk. So, so J Judges 16, 28 says, Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. God, strengthen me just once more and let me, let, let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines. He died. He died. That's not God's best for your life. God has a plan, God has a purpose, and God has a destiny. And over and over, God says, revenge is mine, says the Lord. We see that in Romans 12, 17. Romans 12, 17, that comes from Deuteronomy 32, verse 35. And so Fusion Church, we've got to become a lighthouse of hope. We've got to become a beacon of hope. Not because I'm on straight line growth, but because I am working the junk. 
because I am choosing not to be embarrassed. <laughs> I mean, how, how many of you would like to be mad like me? I mean, I get up here and really share my junk. You get to walk out and go, I'm glad he shared that and I didn't have to say that, you know. Why? I'm all right doing that. Because if you are free and you are serving everything that God has for you, that is what it is about. So as we close, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10 says, And the God of all grace, who called us to His eternal glory in Christ, after this, this blew me away, after you have suffered a little while, will Himself restore, everybody say the word restore, Restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Now, we're we're out of time. But God's plan for your life in the free fall is to be strong. Everybody say strong. Everybody say firm. And everybody say steadfast. So, man, clip on your seatbelt. You're in the free fall. But God's plan is for me to be strong, firm, and steadfast. Every location, come on, let's stand to our feet. Here is the application. Number one, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now? Lock that in your spirit. And then number two, what is a practical takeaway from today's message? Again, lots of resources in the app, lots of links if you need to access a counselor in our region. And again, don't miss next week as I have Dr. Pat Stewart with me as we unpack help. I think I'm losing it. Let's pray. Father, right now, I pray for your supernatural grace. I pray for your supernatural mercy. I pray for a supernatural wisdom to come on all of us, God, and fill us with your mighty power. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on your children. And we pray this and ask this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said, amen.